To mark the 200th anniversary of the founding of the town of Greece, the Greece Historical Society presents a bicentennial snapshot. Each week, we take a look at a particular aspect of Greece history. Today, we'll introduce you to Tom Toll, the Cooper. One of the most pleasant aspects of doing historical research is uncovering fun human interest stories. In the large scheme of things, they may not be momentous history, but these stories often convey what life was like in days gone by. As you may recall from Snapshot 14, Henry C. Phelps was the owner of the general store at Jenkins Corners. Well, not only did he own and operate the general store, but in the 1880s he also owned a cooperage located around the corner from the store. It was at Phelps Cooperage that Tom Toll learned how to make barrels. Barrels were the main form of packaging in the 19th century. Consider what was kept in them, everything from nails to wine. Flour mills used thousands of barrels a year, and fruit growers needed them to store and ship their crops to market. After being dried in the Lafroy drying house, fruit was shipped to Europe in barrels. This is the grocery department of Wegg's General Store. Notice the barrels on the right side. What might they contain? Pickles, flour, crackers, dried beans, all those barrels had to be made by hand. That was the work of a cooper. Thomas Toll was 21 years old when he started working for Henry Phelps. Eventually, he started his own cooperage. It was located next to the home he built on College Avenue, or Gooseneck as it was sometimes called, because of its shape still clearly evident on a current map. When interviewed in 1972, Tom's son Frank said, my dad began making barrels in early August. He bought his staves in the rough, and once a year, an agent from New York City came up to take the order for staves, hoops, and headings. They were shipped out to North Greece in boxcars on the old Hojack line. We'd go down to the station with racks up on the hay wagons and load the supplies. Dad's business was spread clear down to the lake and over to the Parma Town line. He even had a warehouse down at Braddock Bay. In those days, the whole section was apple orchards and dad would ride his bicycle all around the countryside and take orders from the farmers or collect his money. He never learned to drive a car. Tom Toll was a man who believed in hard work and hardly allowed himself an idle moment. He was the village barber and two nights a week he could be found in a second floor room of the Larkin Hotel attending to that trade. A shave and a haircut cost the proverbial two bits or 25 cents. After 18 years as a cooper, Tom bought the old Conway land and became a farmer. His farm was next door to Dr. Ab Dialbliss Carpenter. Years before, when he was a lad in his teens, he would do odd jobs for the old doctor. The doctor's beautiful house and estate made a lasting impression on toll. Although born in Parma on August 26, 1866, Tom Toll lived all his life in North Greece with the exception of 12 years in which he lived in the city of Rochester. Tom sold his farm when he went to work for Kodak. But when he retired from Kodak in 1932, he wanted to live in the country again. And whose property did he purchase? The Carpenter Mansion and Farm. Tom Toll and his wife Carrie lived the rest of their lives at their country home and celebrated 60 years of marriage there. That carriage house of Dr. Carpenter and the Tolls was on property that once belonged to Lewis Combs, the carriage and butter churn manufacturer we told you about in Snapshot 22. Our next subject is Jerome Combs, his son, a lifelong resident of North Greece. Thanks for joining us this week. Next week, our subject is Jerome Combs, a baseball playing farmer. This is Maureen Whalen inviting you to join us next Tuesday for another Bicentennial Snapshot presented by the Greece Historical Society. Want to learn more from the Greece Historical Society and Museum? Then click that subscribe button for more content and hit that bell icon to get notified when there's more Bicentennial Snapshots. You can visit us on the web at greasehistoricalsociety.org. You can find us on Facebook at Greece Historical Society. You can follow us on Twitter at GreeceNYHistory. And you can stop in at the Greece Historical Society at 595 Long Pound Road.